welcome back. This is Power Electronics, and we are covering the boost converter as part of our DC to DC converter sequence. And this is the second part to our boost converter. And let's go over what we're going to cover in uh, this second part of the video sequence. Here's the overview for this video sequence. We're going to first review the boost converter and we'll look at the uh, input and output voltage relationships. We'll derive the design equations for sizing the MOSFET, the diode, and the capacitor. And the capacitor will be based on the output ripple and the switching frequency. Then we'll look at the power loss in the MOSFET and the diode. The MOSFET and the diode contribute the most loss in our DC to DC switch mode type uh, power supplies or switch mode regulators. So it's important to understand where the losses come from in those two devices. Let's review the schematic of our boost converter. We have an input voltage, which is DC, and we have an inductor. The low side switch is a MOSFET, and when that is turned on, it shorts this node to ground creating current to flow and ramp up through the inductor. We hold that switch closed for some portion of, of the total switching time, which we'll call D, T sub S, and T sub S is our switching period. We open the switch back up. The current that was flowing through the inductor cannot change instantaneously, starts to flow through the diode and goes to the output load, which I've shown here. And as that current flows, it will start to ramp down and decrease. And we have a ripple current through our inductor, I max and I min. Now let's go back and review that. Here are the input and output relationships for the voltage and current that we derived in the first part of this video sequence, part one. We see that the output voltage is equal to the input voltage divided by one minus D, where D is the duty cycle. And the input current is equal to the output current divided by one minus D. Because D is between zero and one, the denominator of our output equation is less than one, thereby our output voltage is greater than our input voltage. Likewise, our output current is less than our input current. And the sizing of the inductor is based on our input voltage, the duty cycle, our switching frequency, and the amount of ripple current we will allow through the inductor. We can also write a design equation for the inductor based on substituting the output voltage for the input voltage into this equation. And doing that, we see that V out times one minus D, which is equal to V in times D all over FS times delta I, the ripple current through the inductor. And sometimes that might be a better equation to use. We can also uh, uh, create, uh, if we know if this is a resistive load, which I've done in the past, substitute uh, V out is equal to I out times the resistive load. Again, if it is a resistive load, we can substitute that into the equation and we get another form of sizing the inductor, which ba is based on L is equal to our load resistance times one minus D, D all over FS. And again, I don't know if this one's better or not. This is giving us the ripple current through the inductor as a percentage of the output current. Let's go on to sizing the, the MOSFET for this device. And if we look at our, our arrangement here and we do KCL, we see that from T equals zero to D times TS, that portion of the, the switching period, which the MOSFET is on and basically shorted to ground, we see that the current through the MOSFET starts at I min and ramps up to I max. and then comes back down. We also see that the maximum voltage across that, in, that MOSFET when it's open is equal to VN. So we must size VDS equal to VN and we size the average current through the MOSFET, which is equal to, we look here, 
Uh, we can, let me size this based on our output current. I out divided by one minus D. And the average will be, if we take that average over this switching interval, will be D times that value. We can also find the conduction loss or the average conduction loss, which I'll label PQ conduction, will be equal to the instantaneous power integrated over one period. And that is equal to IO divided by one minus D. I'm going to assume it's approximately that value. We're gonna square that value times the drain to source resistance when the MOSFET is on. And if we integrate that over one period and divide by the period, we will get a factor of D in there. And that becomes our conduction loss for the MOSFET for the boost converter. The switching loss is the same for any type of switching device where we look at the, uh, the, the, the power loss and switching on and the power loss and switching off. And I've covered that in other videos. Now let's look at the diode. And we see that, again, if we look at KCL at this node, the inductor current coming in is equal to the current in the MOSFET and the current in the diode. And so if I sum the current in the diode together, I sub Q plus I sub D has to equal the current in the inductor via KCL. And so we get the current flowing through the diode and it looks like this waveform based on whatever we've selected for our ripple. Again, remember our ripple current through the inductor is equal to I max minus I min. And we can now obtain uh, the, the maximum current that we would need to design that diode for. And the other thing to look at is the maximum uh, repetitive re reverse maximum voltage across the diode, which for this example is going to be approximately V out. So for our diode, our repetitive reverse maximum is equal to V out. In actuality, I would probably uh, size it slightly higher than that. As we've always talked about, we don't want to be right on that cusp. We want to put a little bit of a safety factor in. And our average diode current will equal I0 divided by 1 minus D. And again, if we take the average, it will be on for 1 minus D of the time. And that cancels out. This provides us with an equation for the conduction loss through our diode. And the loss through the diode is equal to I out, the average current through the diode, times our forward voltage drop of the diode. And as you've heard me talk about in the past videos, oftentimes we end up putting a Schottky diode in here to minimize that forward voltage drop. And typical Schottky diodes are on the order of a, of a half a volt, possibly less. The other thing we can do is we can replace that diode with a high side MOSFET switch acting in tandem. That is called a synchronous boost converter. Uh, we are not looking at that. We are not investigating the synchronous boost converter, but again, we can reduce the losses even for, further and minimize this loss that's due to the diode by replacing that with a MOSFET. That's called a synchronous boost converter. Finally, let's look at how we size the capacitor. Here is the equation for sizing the capacitor, and we'll derive this equation. And it's based on the charge during this period of time. As you see, during this period of time, when the MOSFET is shorted out, the current through the capacitor is negative. It is providing the current to the load. And it's relatively constant. It's equal to minus I sub zero, which means that that current's I sub zero. And so that total charge, Q, is equal to that area under the curve, I zero times DTS. 
our change in voltage, which is the change in the output voltage, is equal to 1 over C times IO DTS. We can solve for C and we obtain C is equal to IO D. I'm going to replace TS by its reciprocal, which is the switching frequency, times DV out, which is the ripple voltage across the load, and it's the same ripple voltage across the capacitor. We can look at the current flowing through the capacitor, and I'm not going to go into that, but the current flowing through the capacitor, there is some loss in that capacitor due to the equivalent series resistance. So any type of switch mode power supply with a capacitor on the filtering output and on the filtering input, we want a low ESR. Uh, depending on the size of the device, we're either going to use an electrolytic, uh, if it's a larger device, or we're going to use a, a, a multi-layer ceramic chip type capacitor for smaller types of power electronics. Again, minimize the ESR, will minimize the loss. Our main loss contributors, however, will be the MOSFET and the diode. Let's review the key points in this second part of the video. We ended up with the... Uh, Equations for, for sizing the MOSFET. Our drain to source maximum value really needs to be greater than our input voltage, not equal to, but greater than. Our conduction loss is due to the input current, uh, which is only on for a portion of D. So the input current, which is right here, squared times the RDS when it's on for the, the MOSFET. The, our, our switching loss is still the same. Recall the switching loss was one half times uh, V, V. it's gonna be V in times I in. Times T on, which is the time it takes to turn that switch on plus T off, the time it takes to turn the switch off all times FS. So that is our average switching loss, but go back to previous videos to see where that was derived. Finally, our diode has a uh, forward conduction loss of approximately equal to the, not the output voltage, but the feed forward voltage, V sub F for our diode and times I sub zero, and our capacitor sizing is given by this equation. So those are the key points for this video for the boost capacitor. Again, the boost capacitor has an output that is equal to the input divided by one minus D. Our output voltage goes up, but our output current goes down. I did not talk about it, but typically D is going to be slightly greater than what our design is just due to the losses. And oftentimes we have a regulator with feedback control that is adjusting that duty cycle dynamically to always hold the output at a very uh, fixed value. Thanks for watching.